welcome back to Beyond the Veil Tarot and Astrology. My name is Candice Marie. Thanks for joining me. I'll be your astrologer today. Happy Sunday, everybody. I hope your guys' weekend is going well. Uh, back at it with another video. We're actually going to be doing the astro weather for the week of May the 5th through the 12th, 2024. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Let me know how you're feeling with these energies. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you guys about what we've got going on, and I am glad to announce that it's a bit of a quiet week ahead. We get a little bit of like peace before we start seeing some of the uh, Uranus conjunctions that will be taking place next week, but that doesn't mean there isn't stuff going on. Um, we are going to be seeing an absolutely beautiful chef's kiss new moon in Taurus, uh, very much supported by Venus in its ruling sign Taurus. And it's helping us all kind of get our act together, set new intentions in regards to security, abundance, resources, self-esteem, all that good stuff. Um, and we're also gonna see some Saturn sextile action kind of going on. So that'll be helping stabilize us throughout this next week as well. We're getting a little bit of support with Saturn and Pisces, where it's kind of like the dream team where Pisces and Taurus are working together. Um, and probably the only ouch this week we're gonna see is the final return of the Mercury Chiron conjunction, which has been playing out for the last several months throughout the Mercury retrograde in Aries. Now we're not at a shadow yet, pretty soon, uh, but this will be an important kind of thing to watch this week when it comes to communication. Um, so keep that in mind when it comes to how you're expressing yourself, how you're communicating with other people, your thoughts, your actions, are they in alignment? And where is this showing like a final completion of working through issues that have been unfolding really since, you know, the better part of March uh, when it comes to, you know, healing the way that we talk to ourselves um, or finding the courage and the ability to kind of stick up for ourselves and where that also can be a little painful as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, we're going to start with today, Sunday, the 5th of May. Um, hopefully you guys are enjoying your Cinco de Mayo <laughs> for those of you guys who celebrate. Um, we're waking up this morning and it is an action packed morning. Okay, guys. Uh, and also happy, happy Sunday to all my Sunday crew. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, obviously I'm in a, I'm in a different location. This is my kind of standing office for the next month. I'm on vacation, but I'm, I'm still working. So hopefully, uh, you guys are enjoying the new layout. Um, but yeah, definitely a, a very active day. Uh, we wake up in the morning with the moon in Aries. Um, so just as a heads up, guys, the moon is going to make quite a bit of contact with other placements in Aries prior to coming into the new moon in Taurus. Um, so we're kind of feeling this, this dark moon vibe. People get a little grouchy. They get a little angry when we have a dark moon in, uh, in Aries. It's kind of like working out all the issues that we have with ourselves the next two days prior to being able to kind of set intentions for, you know, tranquility, uh, for peace, for stability, all those like nice Taurus things. So you guys are going to feel this kind of like uptick in energy today uh, because when we wake up, the moon is in Aries, but it's also still in conjunction to Mars. You know, that was happening, that conjunction uh, really late last night, early this morning. So there might have been some temper tantrums, some flare ups and things taking place on Saturday night, which is leading to some potential conflict on Sunday. Um, one of the best things we can do when the moon is in Aries is have our own agenda. Get up in the morning, do something independent, go for a run, be active, take some time for yourself and uh, find ways to be, I think, a little bit more uh, self-focused or a little bit more assertive. Um, literally the moon, right, in Aries is about expressing its emotions freely. It's a fire sign, so it's gonna be a little spicy. And with that conjunction to Mars, we're feeling emotionally like some kind of pressure. So physical movement or finding ways to create or kind of get around can really help diffuse some of the tension that can come from that conjunction. Um, and as we're, we're waking up this morning, it's, it's leaving that conjunction, but still it's close enough for us to feel the flames and it's gonna be heading towards a conjunction with the North Node. Um, so a lot going on, right? Moon Mars is kind of emotional, kind of volatility. Uh, you know, Moon conjunct the North Node is what am I feeling? What do I need to do? Where am I feeling this intense need to start or initiate something or, or fight, uh, that definitely can be a theme with that conjunction. Um, and then we'll see that moon coming into conjunction with the North Node. So it's interesting, it's almost like the event Saturday into Sunday is like ramping up and making us more aware of our feelings. 
Now, when the moon is in Aries, we look at Mars, and Mars is in its domicile. So you guys are going to feel over the next few weeks, as Mars gets closer and closer to the North Node, it's going to be like Mars on steroids. Um, so definitely this feeling of being impatient or kind of popping off or wanting to initiate things, wanting to be more entrepreneurial, physically active, all that stuff is going to be kind of coming up. So it's great for being busy, right? Uh, being assertive or having like a to-do list or you know making a commitment to be more physically active, uh, but it can be a little tricky, especially when it comes to communication and expressing our own needs. Um, so something that you guys wanna watch for is on Sunday, later this evening, we're gonna see the moon cross the North Node Fateful events happen when the moon meets with, you know, it's, it's its own north node. I mean, the nodes are based off of the moon. The moon changes signs roughly about every three days. And so we have moods. So the mood for today into tomorrow is going to be impatient, quick moving, you know, being able to reassess what our needs are. And that moon touching on the north node at 15 degrees is about communicating. This is how I feel right now in this moment, right? You guys have heard me like uh, reference Ram Dass and his be here now kind of spiel, but that's very much Aries. It's like, what are we doing right now in the moment? Um, so we may feel as if there are things coming up emotionally for us that we need to really be uh, in, a, in attunement with. It can also be where our moods or our uh, frustration or our reactions are stemming from emotions that we're actually not dealing with and we're like denying within ourselves. Um, so be mindful of that. But yeah, 15 degrees is a Gemini degree. It's a communication degree. It's like that burning, I need to say this. I need to tell you how I'm feeling right now. And certainly if you're dealing with younger people or like, you know, you know, toddlers or like little kids and stuff, there, there can be meltdowns. So be mindful of that, especially that moon represents like um, maternal uh, instincts. So it can be a tendency to kind of be like, okay, you know, get it together, brush yourself off, keep going, you know, like, you know, be, be strong, you know, work through it. Um, and there can be a tendency to uh, push through our emotions sometimes when, when that kind of shows up. Anyway, um, the moon will stop uh, with the conjunction in the kind of dinner time hour, depending on where you guys are. And then it's going to come into conjunction with Mercury. So you'll be seeing that late on uh, Sunday night on the 5th, going into Saturday morning. Personally, I feel like the moon touching with uh, Mercury as well as Chiron can definitely be like Sunday, Monday, fighting words. You guys have heard me use that term before, uh, but the Mercury Chiron conjunction is actually brewing this evening. Now, when we think about Mercury, right, uh, the messenger, it represents how we communicate, how we get around, how we talk to people, um, things connecting to writing, to learning, to business, transactions, travel, and it's in a cardinal fire sign that's ruled by Mars. So there is this, I need, you know, or I feel that I need this right now. So watch for some of the tempers that can kind of flare up, I think, uh, this evening, and it can lead into tomorrow morning. But the moon hitting 19 degrees is reactivating that solar eclipse that we had in April, and still Mercury is hovering around that degree. Chiron is hovering around that degree. And when all three align, you're gonna see this happening at 20 degrees. Uh, so this will be over, uh, over the overnight basically for at least you know, us here uh, in the United States um, and in parts of you know, Canada, Mexico. Uh, those of you guys who are in Europe and other parts of the world, you're probably experiencing this in the morning. Well, the moon triggers events. So uh, 18 degrees, uh, excuse me, 20 degrees is connected to Scorpio. So when we see a conjunction like this, uh, it makes me kind of wonder. So let me read to you guys what uh, Nicola says about Sabian symbols when it's uh, at 20 degrees, okay? So uh, 20 degrees is connected to Scorpio, so it can be life-threatening. It can deal with uh, death and re -begin uh, new beginnings and rebirth. Um, some say that this has connections to, uh, you know, dangerous situations or, or, you know, situations that can involve death. Um, things connected to like the underground world or operations, other people's properties, things connecting to uh, garbage or recycling or bathrooms. Um, but generally when I see 18 degrees, it's about something being destroyed, okay? Um, excuse me, I keep saying 18, 20 degrees, about something being dis destroyed. So when I look at this conjunction, all being ruled by Mars, I think we're gonna be hearing more about where people are hearing 
uh, oh, you know, there is this devastation going on somewhere, or there is this potential threat of war, or there is this kind of breakdown in terms of, um, you know, communication and the ability to express ourselves because the moon is emotional and Mercury is about uh, speech. I think this is a lot of like people having meltdowns over concerns about freedom of speech personally, just to put it simply. Uh, more news coming out about uh, that and whether or not we're able to kind of still maintain that. But also there is a connection here to um, things that can be about, um, you know, underground places, things that are hidden, uh, loans, things connected to uh, borrowing and lending, uh, things that are also connected to abusive language, right? So what is and is not considered to be abusive language? Certainly Mercury is still in shadow. So I think there's a, a huge debate this week about, you know, what can and cannot be said. Um, obviously, I'm speaking to what's been kind of going on in the United States with uh, some of the moves and um, the legislation revolving around hate speech. Um, I definitely think that this is going to be a big theme. You know, sticks and stones can break our bones, but words apparently can hurt us this week. And that's going to be a big theme with this conjunction. On an individual level, I think people are going to be discussing whether or not this is actually infringing on the ability to communicate and express things freely and how they feel about that, right? So I don't think people are going to have problems kind of discussing that and talking about that. Regardless of where you stand on the matter, I do anticipate we're going to see this kind of ramping up a little bit Sunday, Monday um, into the beginning of the week. Now for you, this is possibly about looking at the way that you express your feelings and your emotions. Is that, uh, you know, you reacting out of fear or reacting out of, um, you know, fear of change or rejecting something or getting outside of your comfort zone? Certainly that can be like a theme here. Um, but I do anticipate this is going to be something revolving around um, working up the nerve to communicate and express something that we're afraid to say or we're afraid to share. Um, because we're still in the post-retrograde shadow, it can also be that we are finally working through where there's been difficult communication and hurt feelings and words and things like that uh, throughout the last several weeks. And we're finally kind of wrapping that up and we're changing the way that we communicate with other people because we realize that we've hurt other people's feelings, right? Um, so that's going to be kind of happening. Think back to what happened on uh, April 16th and May the 20th. Now on these two times, that's when we uh, last saw Mercury in conjunction to Chiron. Um, obviously with the Mercury retrograde cycle, you know, we see the pre-shadow where it kind of acts up a little bit. So that was in April. We see the retrograde, uh, which was, you know, the end of May when it was retrograding back in conjunction with Chiron. And now this is the post shadow. So this is the third hit. So there's been some kind of miscommunication, some kind of communication breakdown. People, you know, maybe hurting feelings because they're getting impatient and acting out and kind of saying things. Look at where Aries is in your chart so you can kind of make sense of where this has been playing out. But I think because the moon is here, basically it's going to trigger it again. Um, so you might find that there is this reoccurring pattern of being like, oh, I'm blurting out and saying something, you know, and I'm like kind of doing myself a disservice or I'm noticing with, with these particular dates that I'm having an issue, uh, you know, being assertive or communicating with a partner or with a friend. Um, so it's definitely, it's going to come back up again. Thankfully, it's happening in uh, the very early morning hours. Um, so if you're finding yourself in a position tonight on Sunday where you're kind of like pushing to have a conversation or maybe you're being impatient about something, wait, just sleep on it. Don't rush through something. Don't pressure somebody to communicate. Give them a little bit of time um, and wait until this uh, moon kind of passes this conjunction. Um, the Sabian symbol is an interesting one. I was looking at that. So it's 20 degrees. Uh, so I would read 21. Okay. And this is the, uh, the prize fighter <clears throat> entering the ring. Um, the symbol speaks to a belief that self in, self's invisibility on all levels, all natural immunity to criticism and willingness to risk. The image of the fighter entering the ring uses a figure of a boxer or fist fighter to conceptualize readiness to attack or defend the position in public. It also alludes, uh, it also alludes to a need to be actively involved in life or where the action is. On a practical level, the symbol can also indicate very forceful and dominant personality that's per that particularly in enjoys controversy and challenge. At its highest, the symbol represents self-assertion, courage, and willingness to fight for rights and principles. Uh, the negative is foolhardiness and daredevil antics or achievement of goals through cr crude bully tactics or aggressive takeovers. The accent is on opposition, controversy, and conflict. Strong feelings may be expressed. Pride and fear, losing a position of some kind, can result in arguments and differences of opinion over who is the best or who is right and wrong. 
Your greatest advantage lies in looking at things from the other fellow's point of view and listening carefully to what he has to say so you can understand where he's coming from. Guard against being overly sensitive or defensive or critical of your fellows. This is not a good time to order others around or issue ultimatums. Stepping stones are self-confidence, strength, self-assertion, courage, force, competition, activity, combat, conflict, and defense. Mercury can be seen as students, right? I mean, you know, I don't, I don't really feel like I'm saying anything that isn't obvious, but Mercury can be studious. It has that connection to Gemini. Um, and I think about just like the violent protests and the things that are just kind of erupting, you know, all across the United States right now um, on university campuses. Um, and so I think that this may be more news pertaining to this, and especially on the back end of the shadow, it's like where this is actually creating more conflict, where this is actually doing, you know, more, uh, you know, like um, disservice, you know, to, to anything that has to do with communication and freedom of speech. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. But I, I think that there's, there's something kind of connected to this. Um, I also would say to you guys that, you know, you have to pay attention because the moon is a trigger. So whatever's kind of going on tonight into tomorrow morning, um, where is this trigger coming up, making you realize like, hey, um, you know, it pains me to not communicate and speak up for myself. And so there can be negative emotions coming up that are kind of showing you what you need to actually be speaking up and talking about or vice versa, where there can be a tendency to be overreacting and then, you know, creating, uh, I think, uh, wounds within yourself or within relationship to other people because there is this sense of being impatient or not understanding or not understanding somebody else's perspective. So I love that the Sabian symbol talks about really taking a second to kind of see somebody else's perspective rather than just kind of like lashing out at another person and uh, making it even more difficult to be able to kind of like uh, not just relate to each other, but find, find balance and harmony, you know? One of the qualities that I've noticed with uh, Aries, uh, Mercury and Aries, Aries moon, any real strong Aries signature, first house signature, it's a tendency to shoot from the hip and to kind of react to something and then think about it afterwards. And so you guys want to kind of really look at, okay, you know, am I feeling this coming up? What have I learned from the past times that this conjunction has happened? How can I learn how to kind of just pay attention to the emotions and diffuse the situation? But like I said, it's happening pretty, pretty much in the early, early, early morning hours. Um, all right. So then this is going to be taking us to the sixth. That's going to be Monday. Uh, when we wake up in the morning, the moon is still in Aries. It is now separating from the conjunction to Chiron and the moon. So uh, unless there's some more chaos or something that's going on, you know, in the late early hours, I mean, maybe we hear about this perhaps on the news that could be kind of coming up. Um, but I think that as long as the moon is in Aries and it's dancing with all of these planets, it's, it's also still reverberating off of Mars. And Mars is at four degrees while this is happening. So it can be where there is a difficult time finding peace within relationships with people in our home, our family, our homeland. Um, it can also be revolving around the past or our roots or our ancestry. So there's some kind of connection here to being like, we're getting angry because of what has happened over you know, time and time and time again, or we're getting angry over something kind of connected to the past. What's interesting is that the North Node is very much about the future. Um, so as it's coming into conjunction with the North Node, it's also saying to us, yes, we have to take into consideration history and what's happened in the past. And maybe we're, you know, reacting and getting really sensitive or kind of standing up for ourselves because we don't want to see history repeat. But it's also saying, well, think to the future. Let's not repeat past habits. Think to the future. Where can we be going collectively for the future? Um, and finding a way to be able to kind of navigate this in a peaceful manner where, you know, people can express themselves, right? So much about... Um, you know, Aries is about the personal identity. And so I think a lot of people are, uh, you know, getting uh, very upset or wounded uh, because of identity matters, you know, across the board. Anyway, um, so Monday, you know, the moon is going to be hanging out in Aries until it moves into Taurus. And that'll be a little bit later in the day. Uh, but when the moon goes into Taurus, it is in its exaltation. So Things calm down a little bit. I mean, like I said, you know, Sunday into Monday, uh, you guys are really going to be feeling like that dark moon. And that's when the moon phase is kind of getting ready to move into the new moon in Taurus. So we're grumpy, we're irritated, we're agitated. It's harder to kind of find the peace. Uh, so try to find ways to be a little bit more alone or independent or have a way to blow off steam. Um, love the moon in Taurus. You may notice the shift pretty significantly on Monday evening. Um, the only thing to take into consideration is 
We have uh, you know, a stellium kind of, of, of placements, if you consider the North Node in Aries, which is still very kind of rock'em sock'em. And now we're having a pretty significant build pretty much from uh, you know, mid-May on in Taurus. Um, so we're gonna be feeling this really intense Mars energy, really intense Venus energy, um, and it's kind of like battle of the sexes, you know, Mars and Venus. And they're both in their domicile. So in theory, they're, they're actually doing their best work. They're playing with a home field advantage. The challenge is that um, as we're coming into the North Node in Taurus, there's going to be, excuse me, the new moon in Taurus, there's going to be some Uranus stuff kind of going on. So we're adjusting to the new future. We're adjusting to this new beginning. And it's sometimes with a twist or with some sense of like unexpected, you know, excitement. Anyway, um, also today, something you're going to notice is when the moon goes into Taurus, pretty much immediately off the bat in the PM hours, it's going to start coming into a square with Pluto, okay? And Pluto is now retrograde, by the way. Um, so Pluto went retrograde early, the beginning of May. Um, Pluto will be retrograde as it returns back several months from now into Capricorn. I'll do a whole video on that because I feel like when Pluto is at 29 degrees, we saw some of the most critical things happening. Um, but I really think that this is a little different. You know, Pluto, when it's retrograde, um, it's, it's deeper. There is this sense of not really seeing the true challenges and fear and conflict and breakdown. And it's in the sign that deals with society, right? So the moon going into Taurus, it's feeling challenged as it squares Pluto. It's basically saying, hold on, we, we want peace. We want stability, right? We want security. We don't want chaos. We just want, we just want to be able to kind of like do our own thing um, and find pleasure. And so what's interesting is that there's almost like a sense of this being challenged by Pluto's retrograde. It's saying that maybe on a, on a uh, level socially or like within society, we're seeing people who are like, okay, we just want to be away from the chaos. We don't want to be interacting with it. We don't want to be hearing with, about it. We don't want to be dealing with it. Um, and we're trying to focus on our own set of, uh, you know, stability, security, you know, morals, all that fun stuff, all this kind of Jupiter and Taurus stuff and moving away from, okay, you know, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. There are going to be a select group of people who are going to be saying, no, not my reality this week. And that's really where the new moon in Taurus, I think, is quite beautiful because it's about building that new reality. Um, something else you're going to see today is also the sun is going to start coming into a sextile with Saturn. And we see this kind of built into the new moon in Taurus as well. Um, but you're going to start seeing this because they're both going to hit a 16, 17, excuse me. Um, so we've got the sun sextile Saturn. So you'll see that like on the 6th and also on the 7th as we're getting into the new moon. But if you guys have seen recent videos where I talked about when we had all the planets that were in, uh, you know, Pisces earlier this spring um, and the sextiles that were being made to uh, Uranus and also to Jupiter. I said, basically, it was like, this is like the dream team, right? Pisces is creating the blueprints. It has the vision. It's putting everything up on the screen. It's, you know, arranging everything and kind of setting the stage and the lighting for ultimately what Taurus would build. So we're seeing some more of that um, actually this week. Um, what, something that I really like is that it's happening at a 17 degrees. So it is basically saying, what does your heart desire, right? What do you love? What do you want to create? How can you have more playtime? How can you be more of a lover? How can you be more childlike or creative or self-expressive? Um, so it, it's, a, it's a short transit, but it's sweet. And because it's built into the new moon in Taurus, we can be working with that for the better part of like the next six months. Um, Saturn stabilizes, right? It gives us the form, it gives us the time, the responsibility, the expectations. It teaches us how to kind of like show up and be more mature. Saturn in Pisces is a little slippery because it's hard for us to be able to kind of like rationalize our dreams. I think it is about making our dreams a reality, but also at the same time, it's about saying, okay, we have to kind of wipe away the things that, you know, are pipe dreams and things that cannot be solid or stable or things that cannot be realistic. Um, so when we start to see the sextiles between Taurus and Saturn, it's saying like, okay, you know, are you seriously committing to your vision, to your dream, to what your hopes are? After all, Pisces is like a Jupiterian sign. Um, so this can be your spiritual beliefs, your religious beliefs, your, what you're envisioning, what you see in your dreams, you know, what you're praying for, what you're hoping for the collective. Um, and it's helping support basically what's being built or what's kind of growing, right? So I, I see this being positive. Um, so you'll feel this today into tomorrow, even though there's some grumpy energy in the background because we're coming into the new moon. Um, but to be honest with you, the moon in her domicile and then tomorrow as the moon meets Venus, I don't think it's as challenging as uh, most people would, would think it is. So it looks like even that moon square Pluto is going to happen 
uh, Monday night pretty pretty late into the evening. So we might kind of get a, get a pass on that as well. Um, this is going to take us into Wednesday the 7th. Excuse me, Tuesday the 7th. Can you guys tell that Mercury is still in shadow? I, I apologize. Tuesday the 7th. Getting all my numbers and days mixed up. Um, so the moon is moving through Taurus. And you're going to see first thing in the morning on Tuesday that uh, the moon is conjunct Venus. So I really like this aspect. I feel like this is quite a sweet energy um, because the moon is in its exaltation, very happy in Taurus, stable, you know, committed, uh, grounded. And it's about pleasure. Taurus is about what smells good, tastes good, feels good. Um, so you're gonna hear a lot of people say, well, new moon in Taurus, you know, money manifestation. Yeah, okay, sure. Especially with the moon meeting Venus just going into the new moon. Um, yeah, it's, it's not a Venus day, but I would treat this as a Venus day because there's gonna be so much energy going on in Taurus. Um, so if you have time on Tuesday to slow down, relax, smell the roses, enjoy yourself, uh, focus on, you know, the things that are going to feel uh, the most uh, sensual or secure for you. Um, really take time to make sure that you're having a quality experience, you know, make yourself a nice meal, go for a walk outside, maybe, uh, you know, do, do some gardening or some cooking, some earth element energies would be really beneficial. Um, but for most of us, the moon Venus, uh, you know, conjunction happening um, in the early morning might just mean, well, we wake up with a sweet tooth, right? Or, you know, somebody brings breakfast, you know, into the office or, you know, somebody comes to see you and they bring you flowers, or they kind of have a gift or, you know, it's just really enhancing the qualities of uh, basically of Venus. Um, that conjunction is going to be at a nine. So this is about global things okay and so this is where i start telling you guys that i've been saying this like shouting from the rooftops for the last like year as we get into spring of 2024 that we would see spring basically in the beginning of summer is when we see the big financial rock rattles and rolls um i feel like this conjunction because it's a dark moon where venus and the moon meet um and the uh, connection to sagittarius and also jupiter is going to be more news of what's going on globally with the global economy um, and how that's being baked into the new moon in Taurus. So nines represent something growing, something becoming more visible, uh, hearing about something in a, in a global sense, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so for you guys, hopefully it's a sweet morning, right? Take time to do something uh, kind for yourself or for someone else. Um, but I do anticipate there's going to be something connected to uh, world, uh, yeah, the world economics here. Uh, what else are we going to see here? So then the moon's going to keep moving. And eventually we're going to see that new moon that's going to be taking place at 18 degrees. Uh, so really late into the evening, uh, early morning in some places. This will be a new moon at 18 degrees. If you guys have not already seen my new moon in uh, Taurus video, definitely check it out. I put it out, I think like a week or two ago. Um, and I talk about all the specific aspects and how this affects the 12 rising signs. But what you need to know is this, new moons are fertile energy. It's basically a new beginning. So you get a, like a reset point in the Taurus or whatever new moon sign it is, area of your chart. So look at your chart, look at the house. The house is about the area of your life where you're getting this restart. 18 degrees, I don't know, I have a lot to say about it. Uh, just like the, the, the cliff notes would basically be, this is about uh, health. It's also gonna be about organization. Um, it can be about jobs, finding jobs, or finding new healthcare practitioners, or setting intentions for healthier new habits. 18 degrees does have connections to Virgo though. So it can be about service and helping people and getting things done. Um, the fact that it's a new moon in Taurus is really about getting our finances in order at this degree. I also think with Venus being the ruler in its domicile, it's basically saying like, it's a lot about like preparation. It's like, okay, do I have what I need? If I don't, what do I need to get? Uh, do I have enough resources? Do I have enough food? Um, do I have enough belief in myself? Certainly belief is a big thing because well, Jupiter is a part of this stellium as well. So it can be about reinvesting in yourself. But Taurus is also about the simple life. It's about the simple pleasures and things that are natural. So some of you guys might be seeing the benefit in investing in your health or better food or higher quality, you know, goods uh, for the simple purpose of not just pleasure, but, you know, feeling, feeling like uh, you're, you're healthier and like, I guess, a little bit more so balanced. Um, but what I love about this is, like I said, this particular new moon is uh, kind of still featuring that sextile to Saturn. So that dream team, if you can believe it, Pisces, Taurus says you can build it. 
Um, so this is a new moon that is rich with opportunities basically to visualize and build your dreams. That's really what you want to be focusing on here. Um, something else that I think about is that this is a new moon particularly close to Uranus. Um, so there is this kind of like wacky, wild, unexpected, you know, volatility. It's like, okay, we're setting new intentions to do things different. So we want to be thinking differently, right? And what is Taurus? Money, food, resources. It can be about the environment. It can be about earth. Um, certainly we can see more rock rattles and rolls kind of going on because Uranus is involved and it's, you know, within basically about four degrees. Uh, but just after the new moon, into the early morning of the 8th, we'll see the moon then hit Uranus. So it's going to be emotionally kind of disruptive. And then it's going to hit Jupiter and it's going to expand something. So it is possible, touch wood, that we are hearing themes revolving around, oh, this major kind of, you know, earth occurrence, volcano, you know, type situation, uh, um, uh, issues with, um, with earthquakes. Uh, but I think this is more banking and finances more than anything, to be honest with you guys. Uh, in my notes, I, I have basically in the late hours of the 7th going into uh, the 8th, uh, watch issues with banking, crypto. You know, something is kind of rattling with this new moon because the moon is going to be activating all those conjunctions. Um, you know, but for the new moon staying on, on the 7th, uh, this is very positive, very fertile, very abundant. And it's very much about having healthier new beginnings and doing something differently. And with Uranus kind of in the mix, it can be about our relationship to our resources, our relationship to our values, where they're changing, where they need to change, uh, where it's all changing collectively. It can also be about where we are all shifting the way that we look at money and resources. If you guys watch that video, I talk about how this eventually becomes a full moon in Taurus in the fall of 2024. And that's going to be also uh, making aspects to Uranus. The, the full moon will be conjunct Uranus. So that's where like the big financial, I think, changes are going to be happening actually in the fall. No coincidence, we have election season here in the United States. So it's not a surprise, but still the fact that both, both of the lunations are very much tied to Uranus makes me feel like there's something significant changing. Silver lining, the sextile to Saturn. So it's saying, hold up, we got you. You know, there is going to be some support coming from the Pisces area of your chart. It's going to be kind of holding things down. However, you have to visualize it. You have to believe. Um, and also as a reminder, you know, two summers ago, we had the North Node Mars Uranus conjunction that was at 18 degrees. So this new moon is almost like an eclipsey type of feel because it's reactivating that conjunction where it was about future development of, you know, war, uh, future development of things pertaining also, I think, to unfortunately weapons. Um, especially when I think of like Mars and Uranus, that's like lasers, you know, we've seen in recent, unfortunately, recent years where there's been some stuff like that going on or some questions about, um, you know, are we seeing changes with the earth or weather patterning? Is that, you know, uh, perhaps an act of, of war? Is there something that's being kind of messed with? You know, Uranus is artificial, Taurus is natural and Uranus is not comfortable in this sign. So I think that this is somehow going to be connected to that as well. And then the physical or the financial impact that that has, right, Taurus. Anyway, go watch that video. Um, here's the Sabian symbol for 19 degrees of Taurus because we round up. Uh, let's see. Taurus 19, a newly formed continent. The keyword is originality, fresh opportunity. The symbol speaks to the fact that experience is ultimately conforms to desires and expectation. The image of a newly formed continent was described by Mark Jones as symbolizing the raw substance of existence, and he emphasized the fact that reality is constantly being reworked through the course of successful overall cycles. The implications here is that experience expands awareness, and with each new realization or understanding of reality in any given situation, man is called upon to make adjustments or reestablish himself and look for new opportunities. At its highest, it represents creative and sweeping vision for the potential to transform the world. Watch for restlessness and inner turmoil or difficulty in learning from experience. The accent is on evolution and changes in the environment. You may suddenly notice some new thing or situation that has been quietly developing for some time. Your greatest advantage lies in adjusting to changing circumstances. Identify a potential and your place in the new scheme of things. Start planning now. Guard against making things more difficult for yourself by resisting change. Try not to expect the worst or fight what might turn out to be a change for the better. So a new moon here, right? It's basically saying like, okay, well that happened. You know, how do we adjust? How do we recalibrate? 
Um, I think that that's, that's really the lesson of this particular new moon and, and basically how to make lemonade and be like, okay, now what do we do? Rather than worrying about it or resisting this change, how do we move with it? Um, and so definitely I think, you know, the fact that Venus is the ruler and it's at 10 degrees, it's behind this new moon, it's basically saying some unexpected changes or limitations or issues with shortages or regulation of money. Point blank, that's what 10 degrees is. Um, and, and what people are doing, I think, to improvise. You know, Uranus is about going against the grain. It's about doing something different. And people might be thinking about, well, what are alternative currencies I can be looking into? Or what alternative things can I be doing with my resources? Are we creating, you know, um, parallel economies? Are we trading? Are we seeing other things going on where people are reimagining what it means to, uh, you know, basically give something some sort of value? So that might be happening with this as well. All right, so that's pretty much the seventh. Um, we'll take you into the eighth which will be Wednesday. And uh, this is gonna be significant as well because this is when moon meets Uranus. So, you know, we have the new moon in Taurus, 18 degrees. Until the moon leaves Taurus, we're still in that new moon energy. So it'll be interesting to see the moon hit 22 because that's a Capricorn degree. Um, so it does represent some kind of like challenge, limitation, overcoming something. So it's like, okay, this thing happened. How do we overcome it? And then we're gonna see the moon hit Jupiter. This can be sudden opportunities for change in fortune, right? Venus is the ruler after all, so it does kind of mean that some people might uh, really get lucky, um, you know, with some kind of change going on with the market or, you know, something they've been investing in. Um, I really feel like this could be happy coincidences, right? It could be about indulgences. It could be about trying food or perfume or things on that we didn't think that we would like, but we're like, oh, that's different. I like it. Um, so that might be, you know, part of how this manifests for you guys. I just think intuitively, you know, Venus and Uranus and the moon all being there, there's something going on with some kind of change in regards to uh, resources. So I put watch banking, crypto, et cetera, financial news going on, global news, something's rattling. Um, and when planets hit 23 degrees, which you will eventually see next week when the sun hits Uranus at 23 something suddenly accelerates. And so I do think, you know, some point in the next two months, we are gonna see some kind of acceleration towards issues pertaining to more banking collapses or consolidations going on where like other banks are basically gonna be kind of buying up some of the little little banks. Um, and I, I'm not the only one who's saying that. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not anybody who specializes on the economy. I just read the astrology, but he hearing some interesting stuff uh, coming out from other independent people who do specialize in, in some of these topics, basically being like that, suggesting that uh, some major uh, governments and banking institutions are kind of bracing for this, that there are a select number of banks who are basically on a list uh, who will potentially be dealing with this, but nobody knows who the banks are. So that's interesting. Um, anyway, so uh, stability, things that are financial, earth-related, this is all Taurus. Uh, the positive is that, you know, the moon coming into conjunction with Uranus, while it's shocking, the conjunction to Jupiter is like, oh, I actually, this is, this is a good thing. Okay, we're making lemonade. Try to keep that in mind on Wednesday um, as you go through that. Not much else is happening here. We're going to start to see finally um, the moon leave that conjunction with Taurus, and then it will make one final aspect. It will sextile Neptune right here in the PM hours, both at 29, by the way, <laughs> critical degrees. Uh, and then that moon's gonna drop into Gemini on Wednesday evening. Um, so once it drops into Gemini, new moon energy is done. We're good, we've moved on from that. The moon's immediately gonna start coming into a trine with Pluto, which I like. Powerful communication, information-based. It's an air trine. This can be really aligning media information, uh, you know, uh, connecting with people um, in our local community and uh, building on some kind of transformation of goals. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to this right after the new moon. I think it's going to be about information kind of flying very quickly. Um, obviously, when the moon is in Gemini, we look at Mercury and Mercury is now starting to leave the conjunction from Chiron. Maybe you're still feeling the effects of the Mercury-Chiron conjunction, wounded thoughts, wounded words, but we're, we're separating from that now, so it should start getting a little bit easier. All right, so that moon's going to continue uh, moving through Gemini through the evening, and that's going to bring us to Thursday the 9th. And this is going to be in the morning. So moon still in Gemini, nothing's changing. We're still looking at what's going on with Mercury. Mercury is almost out of shadow, so we're almost there. 
Um, the only thing you're gonna really see here is that the moon's gonna be sextiling Mars. So we're feeling, um, I think, a little bit more confident in uh, taking action, being assertive, being independent, uh, speaking, writing, getting out there, connecting with people. Um, that seems to be like the theme. Um, we will eventually also see that uh, there will be a sextile to the north node as well. And when that happens, it will also be trining the south node. Quick moving transit, but worthy of mentioning. And that will be on uh, Thursday night. Okay. So this is Gemini degree, Gemini degree, Gemini degree. I feel like the moon sextile the north node is like where we're taking our newfound actions and intentions and things that we've been doing and put them into action or we tell people about it or we share, it, we write about it. And then that trying to the south node is like, you know, actively clearing karma. Um, certainly when we see aspects to the nodes, there is some sense of moving away from the past, moving into the future. So we see harmonious aspects between the nodes in both sides. So it does feel like something is actually actively getting cleared here. Only thing you want to watch is later in the evening, that moon is going to get kind of tangled up in a, tr in a square with uh, Saturn late into the evening though. So thankfully this is another transit some of you guys might have when you're sleeping. You know, moon in the sign of a communication, uh, you know, uh, placement, um, Mercury, Gemini does make communicating, expressing your emotions important, but it almost seems like the square to Saturn is like, no, you don't say anything. We don't talk about it. You know, some kind of breakdown. So communication also should not be pushed, um, in my opinion, on uh, Thursday evening, you know, into uh, Friday morning, because that can create some issues emotionally kind of connecting, sharing, you know, things like that. And then we'll wake up on the 10th and the moon is still going to be in Gemini, obviously. Um, and we're going to see a couple things going on here. So first of all, watch out with communication on this day. Okay. There's some stuff that I kind of picked up here that I was like, Hmm. Um, I think the, the big one for me is that on one hand, the moon is going to come into a square eventually with Neptune. So that can be difficult later in the day, emotionally relating. But we're also going to be seeing that the moon is going to sextile Mercury, which is actually a good thing, but it's going to be at 24. So that makes me feel like there can be some missing pieces. Um, that makes me feel like there can be, uh, you know, details that aren't kind of seen or that we look over. Something's confusing or misconstrued. Um, so this is not a day that I would be pressing for communication, signing things, you know, planning trips, travel, because you'll see the sextile, but then you see the square to Neptune, and that'll be happening later in the day, right? Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? All right, I think that's pretty much it with that. Uh, let's see. So it looks like you're gonna pick up on a sextile early in the afternoon to Chiron and Mercury. Um, so if you absolutely have to have a meeting, you have to do anything like that, you have to send a letter, an email, you know, do it, do it earlier in the afternoon because by the time you get into the evening with the moon squaring Neptune, it does make me feel like at critical degrees, there's a hard time understanding, comprehending, relating, like there's something that's not clear or it may be difficult to kind of actually connect or communicate with someone. So do that earlier in the day if you must. All right, so now we're gonna move to the 11th, which is Saturday. And when we wake up Saturday morning, we've got the moon in Cancer. So the moon's at home. It's comfortable here. Um, although we are gonna see just a little bit of friction. Um, you know, when the moon's in Cancer, sometimes we feel like staying home or we are more sensitive, we're more emotional, we're reflecting on the past, we're connecting with family, we're getting stuff done, you know, with our mom or with the women in our lives, or there can be a sense of feeling a little bit more private. Um, the moon is going to come into a square with Mars, okay? And this is gonna be interesting because both planets are in their domicile. So, you know, obviously Mars is the ruler of Aries, the moon is the ruler of Cancer. So we're gonna see these two planets in very strong positions, kind of duke it out. Um, so when they start coming into a square, is gonna be right here, okay? So this is gonna be right around midday at eight degrees, more resistant to change. This is Scorpio degree, right? We're like, oh, I don't wanna change something. Same as 20. I don't want to change. I don't want to make a shift. Um, and shortly after that, where possibly, you know, you're feeling emotionally pressured in some way, somebody's rushing you and you kind of get flustered and you're like, that's it, I'm going home. Um, or there can be a sense of being like, I don't, you know, I want to take action, but I'm afraid or I, I don't know how to get out of the past or I'm stuck in my feelings. 
Shortly after that, then you'll see the moon start coming into a square with the north and the south node. And so for me, this is interesting. First of all, planets square the nodes, fateful things happen. But this is a conflict, I think, between independence, right, Aries, asserting oneself, and cancer, emotions, home, family, or past. It's like, I want to say something, but I'm going to upset my mom. <laughs> you know? It's like, I really want to like get into it with them, but you know, they're my roommate. Something like that's going to be kind of coming up where there's some friction between the two. You're going to see that square that's going to kind of pick up right around here in the evening hours, um, going into the early morning of the 12th. So these energies can be felt basically Saturday into Sunday. All right, so actually early, early morning on Sunday, the moon is squaring the nodes, um, but then there is a continuation and we wake up on the 12th, which is Sunday. And then here is the moon coming out of the square with the north and south nodes. So whatever friction was going on, you know, Saturday, basically uh, the 11th, you know, it's still brewing in the morning. And then the moon's gonna come into a square with Chiron. Okay, so it's like, okay, well, it's hurting me not to say something or, I'm feeling this wounding or I've been hurt in the past. So I don't know how to like, you know, assert myself. And then eventually we will see the moon also come into a square with Mercury. <laughs> Here's the positive in all of this, right? Uh, the fact that the moon's going to try and Saturn. So Saturn and Pisces teaches us a little bit of time, rest, reflection, taking time to think about things and, you know, kind of decide what we're letting go of, what we're holding on to can be positive. This is very intuitive, very reflective. Uh, but I think that we're going to feel a little emotionally charged and feel like it's difficult to go our own way. And as the moon's picking up that square to Chiron and then Mercury later in the day on Sunday, the 12th, there is this sense of like having communication issues. Now, something else you can lean on outside of the kind of intuitive, emotional trines to uh, Saturn and eventually, eventually Neptune, we're also seeing sextiles to all these placements in Taurus. Um, so, you know, think of Taurus as like stability, it's grounded, it's like solid, it's like, what do I have physically, financially, or, uh, you know, within myself that I can rely on when I get scared or when I get emotional or I get sensitive. Um, so safety and security, like these are the, these are the common themes revolving around Taurus and kind of cancer matters. You guys will also start feeling the sun Uranus conjunction on Sunday. Uh, we feel transits usually within, you know, I used to about two or three degree orb. So it's interesting that as the sun's coming into conjunction with Sat, with Uranus, there is this kind of like, ooh, something is destabilized or something is changing in some way physically um, for all of us because Uranus is kind of a collective planet. And the moon is going to sextile and feed off of that. And it's also going to trine um, Neptune and then eventually Saturn. So there, there is this sense of you know, feeling something's brewing. Okay, what can I do, you know, to, to make sure that I feel cool, calm, and collected? Um, how can I do a little bit more around my home base or my home space that can give me that security? For some of you guys, it's I'm, you know, burning some sage. <laughs> For other people, it's I'm installing a new door, a new lock on my screen, or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something like putting a fence up or something that's going to create more security. Um, for other people, it's going to be, you know, making sure that family and friends are provided for or making sure that, you know, you have some extra groceries or something. These are very like Taurus kind of cancer things. Um, so if you guys are getting a feeling intuitively, that's like, I need to listen, you know, to what my gut is saying. I need to make a change or I need to be kind of more proactive and making sure I'm prepared in some way. Listen to that, especially on Sunday the 12th. Now, like I said, you'll be feeling that conjunction. It'll end up, you know, happening closer to the beginning. We'll talk about that next week. We're going to see a ton of planets that are going to come into um, conjunction, both with Uranus as well as Jupiter. And there's going to there's going to be some stuff that's going to be happening um, in, like I said, the physical or uh, financial world. So we'll deal with that next week. This week is a lot calmer than I think uh, next week is going to be. Um, stay active with that Mars coming into conjunction with the North Node. Find, you know, the area of areas in your chart. That's where you're doing the most action. It can be physical. It can be goals. It can be about um, having a to-do list and getting things done. It can be spending more time on your own. But don't forget Venus is in Taurus too. So take time to slow down. Enjoy yourself. Stop and smell the roses. Focus on the sweet things in life. Don't get kind of caught up in the chaos. And definitely use that uh, new moon to set new intentions about physical, financial, and also self-esteem health. Uh, check out that video. Like I said, there's lots of good recommendations there. Um, this week, I'm gonna bring you guys some new content. We're gonna talk a little bit, doing like a profile on Taurus in the second house because we're in Taurus season and it's kind of the time with all these placements in Taurus to do that. 
Uh, and right after we have this uh, new moon in Taurus, we start talking about the full moon in Sagittarius. It is extra sweet. Make sure you don't miss these videos. Click the bell button below. Subscribe to my channel so you're alerted as to when I have new videos coming out. We are also here every Friday doing live readings. I will be here this Friday doing readings at 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be doing live tarot, so check out the link in the community tab for more if you guys want to sign up for that. And check out my website at beyondtheveiltarot.com. You guys can see all of my astrology calendars, all of the things that I offer. We've also got candles and new moon prints. I teach tarot and astrology, and I have my own personal sessions, so you guys can check that out. Sign up for uh, my uh, my email address, my email address for my email uh, newsletter subscription while you're there. Um, it'd be really helpful. That way you guys are on the up and up when I have new courses and stuff coming out. I'm in the process of working on all that right now, figuring out what the next six months is going to look like because I've got a couple uh, courses and webinars and things that I want to be teaching. Um, so check that out. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Enjoy your Sunday. I'll catch you guys back here on Tuesday. And until next time, be well.